previous video showed how to download and install the Information Workbench. In this tutorial, we will have a look at how to set up the application development environment to write custom providers or react to a code execution or wizard widgets that allow you to execute some code from the wiki and how to implement the backends for those. So first we will minimize the window and stop the process where Information Workbench is running. We will then navigate to the SDK directory and run setup. The setup script will create an Eclipse project directory where you can do your app development in. So first you need to provide the path. So this is my Eclipse directory and I will just create a test project. The script runs and creates the skeleton. Next, to Eclipse and import existing project into Workspace. And select the directory I just created, which is under Eclipse Workspace Test. Press finish. And this creates a default project structure. So from here, we can select the file start test, which is a Eclipse launch configuration, and just say debug start test. And this launches the information workbench out of the directory that we downloaded it earlier. Um, but instead of running in a DOS process or DOS uh, window, the command line output can be seen in the console down here. So now if I go back to my browser, I can reload the page, and I'm back and I can log in. And I have the exact same setup. The next step is to write a small code execution widget. Go back to Eclipse, create a new Java class file, the package shall be test, and we'll just call it exec test. Create a method. one input parameter. We'll just echo the parameter to the command line. And we need to make this method callable from widget. So back to the information workbench, we go to a test page enter the wiki edit mode. First, put on the triple editor. That allows us to add the RDFS label of this page. And below that, we'll add a second widget, which is the code execution widget which will go to the test class. The class and method name. And we'll have one argument, which is the RDFS label. This brings up the following UI. So first, Add the test label and let's run this. But before we run this, let's switch to Eclipse and set a breakpoint. So this line will have a breakpoint. We can go to the debug view. We can see that the information workbench is running here. And now we run this and we see that the we 
hit the breakpoint and you can also see that the input contains the test label which was retrieved from the RDF database and can now be used for various processing tasks like SSH, connections onto host or doing REST calls, etc. Okay, so we just continue and on the UI we're done. The next task would be to write a custom provider so we can create a second Java class, call it my provider. It needs to extend the abstract flex provider. Which has a configuration class. The variables in this config will then be the parameters that are displayed and can be edited by the user on the provider UI. So we'll just have a string, so let's say, let's use an IP address or host name, and we need to add some metadata. So that's the parameter config doc, and it has a display name, for instance. And we need to have a name, of course. Okay, so then we add the unimplemented methods. First of all, we need to return the configuration class. Config needs to be serializable. And the gather method is the most important method of this provider class, where we can just add some statements to the list of statements that which is passed from the framework. So this is most convenient via the RDF util class. We can add statements to this list. And let's just add a very simple statement which uses RDF type a subject predicate and object just for the sake of testing. So we save this class, it's now active in the information workbench. Go back to the UI. So first we need to register this new component. So we go to the REST endpoint. We go to the semantic service. Get to the provider service. And we use the register provider class, which is test dot my provider. We execute this API method. The result is successful. And now we can go back to the home page. Go to settings, data providers. We add a new provider. The my provider shows up. As a, let's give it a test identifier. The schedule will set to zero, so we run it manually. And you also see this IP parameter down here, where we can sh add, just add a bogus IP in this case. And we submit and run the provider. And we get one triple back, which is exactly this test triple, which we return. So we have type, type, type. And of course, also here we can set breakpoints and also access the configuration. So let's just print this for now. Config.ip. So we set those breakpoints. Now we'll run the provider again. Again, you see that Eclipse is blinking. We're in the breakpoint and we can step over and in the console, you can see that the IP address, which was previously added on the or entered on the provider 
um, administration page is now available just using config.ip. So of course here we can now invoke REST services and do whatever we need to do to retrieve some custom triples. Um, so this is fairly straightforward. So in a couple of minutes in this tutorial, we really, first of all, implemented a custom way of collecting data using our provider. We hooked it up into the platform. We can use the standard functionality to configure it. And we also implemented a test page where we enter some data and we use that data. Um, and of course, also data is available that is generated by, by some custom providers. And we invoke some custom functionality which allows you to trigger workflows and um, do all the kinds of things you need to do in order to have custom automation actions. So please check out the um, SDK documentation on the web. So that's available under help.fluidops.com and just navigate to the help section, which basically brings up the same help that is installed locally. And you can search for the SDK. And down here you have all the information you can read up on all the different APIs that are available, the widget APIs, uh, adding custom tasks, um, etc. Maybe one last thing before we sign off. So there's a couple of other build tools that are available uh, within Eclipse. So first of all, you can go to these tools and you can say copy modified wiki pages to workspace. So let's do this. So this launches a script which basically collects the two or the, the one wiki page which we created, which was the test page, and it puts it under data wiki bootstrap. So here it is. And that's exactly the wiki page which I had. And so from here you can uh, you know this is basically the uh, the application that you that, that we developed. So we have the callable from or executable from widgets code in here. We have the custom provider code in here and we have a custom wiki page and you can add ontologies, you can add uh, bootstrap data, you can add custom libraries in here and really create uh, your custom application out of this. And if you want to build this artifact, you can again go to this tools menu and select build solution artifact which runs a build script and packages this as an app which can be deployed onto production. So that's also the setup we recommend for um, you know, making sure that Q8 artifacts are put onto production. So this test.zip was just created and can now be uploaded into uh, a productive instance. So we can show how this works. So let's maybe relaunch the platform. Go back to the UI. If we go to admin apps, you can see that this information workbench is equipped with the test app. So in this case, the test app shows up because um, it has been hooked up or it has been developed by the SDK. If you have a vanilla installation of the information workbench, you can just upload any zip file here and just access the test.zip which you created in the Eclipse environment and then deploy it onto production.